and I was so blessed. And writing it, I was so excited. For it to be Sunday, and today was the day I was preaching, I was so excited to share it with you all. Because I really did think this message was to encourage us all as a body, and to bless us so much. This video got showed at my school accidentally. I was just telling my teacher about it, and he said, I want to see it. Then he ended up showing his whole class. And I'm sort of like, uh, well, you do surprise me, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so my message is hope. Hope and faith interlinked. Hope to me is hoping in something that I've been promised in. Or something that I don't know will happen, but I have the faith that will happen. Hope can be something that, we, that can be the last thing we have. But it can be the one thing we can hold on to. It can be the one thing that helps us to keep racing and keep on that journey. I have a, a verse to read to you. And <laughs> it blessed me so much reading it because I've, ne I've never come across it before. And it's 1 Peter's verse 1, 3 to... Yeah, 1 Peter's 3, 3 to 9. And it says... Praise to be the God and Father for our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into that inheritance, they can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Hallelujah. Who through faith and shielded by God's power until the time of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all of this, you greatly rejoice, through, though now for a little while you may have suffered grief in all kinds of trials. These have come to those who have proven genuineness of your faith, of great worth more than gold, which perishes even through refined fire. May result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you will believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you have received the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. It's just simply beautiful. It's the same chapter our, wo our word is described. Well, it said it in mine. And that is living hope. It's living hope. It's, it's one that has a heartbeat. Because it says in Matthew 6, verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. What a promise and what a hope to have. One that will get you through those trials and fears and a hope that will bring you great joy and a hope in Jesus. It's funny, I sat there pondering because I first wanted to call my preach what's the difference between faith and hope but then this came to mind because I, I really did think they linked. The definition of living hope is it lives inside of you. It flows out in all you do. It flows out in your prayers, flows out in your worship, and it flows out in your conversation. And this is why my preach is called Hope and Faith Interlinked, because we need both. When we have a living hope in Jesus, in his promise, in his, in, in his nature, and when we have faith that even though we can't see that promise, we have faith in it physically, because without faith, we cannot please God. As it says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Hope is different to wishing something will happen. Wishing and desiring can actually cause pain and anxiety. I found that out and that really did make me think. But when we have a hope in what the Lord has said, and what he's doing, it brings us great joy. Faith, and I never knew this either, produces hope. It says in Hebrews 11 verse 1, Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. Hope is a byproduct of faith. When we have faith in Jesus, it produces a great hope. And I have to say, from my own experience of having hope, when the Lord has promised me something, 
it really excited me. When the Lord gave me this message, it excited me. I had butterflies in my stomach because I had faith that I will see that hope and promise come true. But I would be lying if I said I have never doubted them or thought I've just made them up in my head. But when I've seen those promises come true in my life and seen other people, I thought, wow, that is the God we serve. In this church, we are taught to have hope in Jesus and that he will return one day. We will be able to say that when we take communion. It says in John 14, verse 3, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you, and you'll be with me, and you'll be where I am. We have hope that Jesus is coming back. We have a hope that he's coming back for his bride. And we have a hope that the Lord is doing amazing things in this church. It makes my heart burst with, with happiness when I think, what is he doing in this church? And it makes me smile so much that I'm part of it. But I have a question. We all have, if we're accepted Jesus as saviour, a hope, a collective hope in Jesus. But do you have a hope that only you and the Lord know about? One that you're waiting to come, come true. One that you're waiting for faith to see. Romans 5 verse 5 says, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given it to us. Our hope is God-given. It is God-given, and I've never realised that before. So this message has really blessed me because I've found so many things out. Things you think is simple, that's simply not. It excited me even more. And we shouldn't be ashamed of that hope. It's a living hope. It's our breath that pours out of us. And it's beautiful to, beautiful to think that God has given it us for a reason. Because the Lord knows our heart. He knows we second out. He made us. He knows we think, is this true? Can this hope be real? But that's why the Holy Spirit is there to remind you. Do you remember what I said? Do you remember what I promised you? Because our hope is as secure as it says in Hebrews 6 verse 19. We have this hope as an anchor for our soul. Firm and secure, it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. That hope, that hope it just talked about, that's Jesus entering the inner curtain, the inner sanctuary, the one that made a way for us to go to heaven. That hope is as strong as an anchor, safe and secure. So be encouraged this morning. Your hope is secure in the Lord's hands. Because one day, we get to see him face to face. But we also will get to see those hopes come true. Jesus loves you. He does. He is with you. And I have to say, when you're not alone. He's the one that goes after that one stubborn sheep. He's the one that leaves the 99 to go look for you. He's the father that loves you. And I've seen you in your failures. He's seen you in your achievements. He's seen you in your worst and he's seen you in your best. And yet he reminds us daily of that hope, that living hope he's put in us. He knows his children down to a T. He really does. Have hope this morning in what you're praying for and what you're seeking for. If you're waiting for a prayer to be answered, have hope, even if that answer, unfortunately, is no. But have hope that that's the right thing for your life. Have hope in your ministries in life because he's moving in your life if you let him. If you believe in that hope, that living hope, and just typing this made, made me want to tear up because that's great love. That is indescribable. But I can't speak about this. I can't speak about this great hope and this faith we have in Jesus and not talk about what happens when we have that faith and hope and it, when it's not built upon the Lord. Because it can be quite dangerous when it's not built on the one thing he's given us. And because I got a really big Bible for Christmas, I can't flick it. <laughs> it's massive too, so I can see it. It says in Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27, Therefore, anyone who hears 
These words of mine and puts them in practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the steams rose, and the winds blew and it beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had the foundation on the rock. But anyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, the rain came, the steam rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. The Lord has given us a promise in this message. I've heard this story so many times as a child. We, there's even a song, and I never understood it, other than why would you build a house on the sand? Even as a small child, I thought, that's a bit, come on. <laughs> but the Lord is showing what will happen when we don't build on the right, right foundation. When I was looking around, because I thought, I can't just bring the rain came down, and the floods came. no, that's not, that's not the wrong one. <laughs> Yeah, that's Noah. <laughs> Same thing. No, it's not. Because I was looking around for the deeper meaning of this, I really liked what I found. And it said, it's not enough to claim the Lord is our master. It's not enough to just believe and do nothing. We need to build that foundation. Because the Lord has given us these tools. God has, knows when that rain comes. And he wants us to be safe on that rock. But he also gave us a choice to either build it on the sand or the rock. When that storm hits, he told us to be firm on the rock. But it's our choice if we fail and sink on the sand. That is the same for our living hope. If we build on the world and want what the world hopes for us, then we'll just simply fall and sink and never be satisfied. Or even build on what we want. It will cause pain and it will cause hurt. And that's exactly what the Lord in heaven doesn't want us to have because he knows the heartache and the pain because when we build on something we take time when we build on that thing even if it's for the wrong thing and he watches us as our heart aches when we see it took over the, by the sea when they see those sandcastles took over because building takes time the Lord wants that time to be on his kingdom because he knows what our hearts really are longing for but it just sometimes we suppress it or allow our hearts to go astray. Hope is something that will make your heart race, makes your heart jump, because you're realising nothing, and I mean nothing is impossible in the Lord. Sometimes hope can be, feel meaningless, not helpful, and in time it's just proving it won't come true. But that's why it's hope, it also produces faith. As well as the other way around, hope produces faith, because you have faith to believe that they'll come true. In my life, when I've seen hopes come true, I've been absolutely blown away. I've seen people change. I've seen my greatest dreams come true. And I'm only 17 and 18 this month. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying I will be an adult, guys. Warning. <laughs> Although I won't be an adult technically, but hey-ho. So I can't wait to see what the Lord will do when I grow up even more. Because what he's doing right now, I'm blown away with. And I hope you can be the same in your life. Hope creates love in you. Hope is living and is breathing. Hope is something that will happen when you pray for it. For either, Hope is something that produces when you're praying for something. For something you're either longing for for a long time. It's something that the Lord said will come true. Hope can change your life. It can change how you see things. It can change your heart. But like anything else, hope needs working at because it can feel like it's dying out. It can feel like our heart is, start, slow, our heart is slowly fading and fading. But to feed that hope, we need to keep searching after the Lord, to keep your eyes on him is to build that foundation off of his word and to keep growing in the Lord and to do it as a family, as a church, as a body. As you grow in the Lord and put his word and his presence first, you'll be able to enjoy and be in awe of his presence. Your hope will keep growing in those promises, even if you feel like you've mucked everything up. It can't be possible. Hope cannot be ruined. Bitterness can take root in our heart. 
Bitterness has quite a strong connotation to it when we say bitter. But hope is the shovel that will dig those roots out. One by one or all at once. That is how powerful Jesus is. What is your hope when you wake up in the morning? What do you hope when you get out of bed and get ready for the day? Do you hope you'll just get through the day? And I mean, especially for me, when I wake up and think, I've got double psychology, maths, and then that other thing that I really hate. Why? Do, but do I wake up and think, I just want to get through the day? I want to wake up and think, how can I serve you, Lord, today? My hope is to wake up and say that every morning. And you'll see your day change. Even when it's hard, even when things get hard during the day, hope is there. It doesn't make it easier, but the Lord is with you and you can learn from those hard times. And in the day, you can lean on him even more. So what's your hope when you come to church? It can be many things because we're in different places in our lives. We have other things going on. When I walk through the doors, my hope is to be able to worship the Lord, to not hold anything back, and then to be able to learn from the message that is brought. That is what I hope when I walk through the door. And then the last thing is to hug as many people as I can in the church and say hi. Maybe not now because I'm ill, but I would still do it. You just might not want it. (laughs) That is my hope. I wonder what yours is. These are my hopes when I wake up and go to church. When you close your eyes, what is the thing that comes to mind when you say, what is your hope? Our hope can be as firm as a, firm as a mountain. I was learning this in Bible study on a Monday. Our hope has to be as strong as a mountain. It says in Mark 11, verse 23, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to the mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they will say will happen, it will be done for them. If we believe in our hearts what the Lord has promised us, individually and collectively, he will do it, but in his timing, it will be done. But also the Lord doesn't move the mountains. We always think, want him to move all the time. Sometimes he leaves us, he'll move the ones that he knows is best for us, but also for his kingdom. The only thing bigger the only things bigger than fear is hope. Because hope is stronger and fear just makes you sink and not want to move. Whereas hope gives you a reason to move and get up and do the things the Lord wants you to do. And it's, it's that verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hope doesn't make things easier. In Kids Club on Friday, we did an appeal. And one of the kids said, I want to accept that light into my life. And I said, go on, why? Because I won't be bullied anymore. I said, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but that doesn't mean you won't be bullied anymore. It just means you have someone with you through those hard times. He also said he wants to accept that light so he can see in the dark. So so I think he may have misunderstood. (laughs) Which just made me laugh. But that's the same with us. It's the same with hope. But hope is the one thing that we cannot let go of. In those hard times, the Lord is there. So we need to grab hold of her and not let her go because hope is the one thing we have. So what is the difference between faith and hope? I found such a beautiful illustration to describe the difference. The relationship between faith and hope can be illustrated in the joy a child feels when his father tells him they're going to an amusement park tomorrow. The child believes that he's going to the amusement park based on his father's word. That is faith. At the same time, the belief within the child kindles and he starts to get really excited. That is hope. The child's natural trust in the father and in his promise. That is faith. The child's squeal of delight and jumping up and down the expression of Absolute happiness, that is hope. In my life, I've experienced this moment. When I was told I was getting a puppy, I was telling the world. I was so happy. I was jumping with excitement. I freaked out. 
I, I, since a little child, I always used to pray to God, can I have a puppy? I want a puppy. But when my dad told me that, I trusted in his word that we was getting that puppy. And the excitement, that was the hope that it was coming true. As a Christian, this has happened too. I was told I was going to be on the pastoral team. I had faith that that was true by the person who told me. But like a little child who first finds out chocolate is the best thing since sliced bread, I was so excited. That was my hope. That was my hope. The excitement was my hope. And the faith was that I believed that person. In the Lord, and it's funny, I learned this in RE of all things, but not really in RE. In the Lord, we are everything. And in him, we are nothing. It says in Matthew, or John, because I put both for some reason. Verse 15, I mean, chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. This is so true. When we have the Lord, when he crafts us into that plan, we are everything. And we can do everything in his name. We are nothing without him. And we are nothing without the hope of the Lord. When we have hope in the Lord, there's no hopeless situation. Do you believe that? Do you believe there's no hopeless situation? No matter what you do, no, how much, no matter how much you muck it up, the Lord gives hope. And you can go back and rely on him and go back to him. Doesn't mean everything's suddenly okay. Doesn't mean that things get easier. It just means the Lord's in control and he has that. And we have that hope. False hope. We can have false hope through what the world gives us. At school, it was theme day. And I was told we had a meditation time. And I refused to do it. Because I found out what it was. They had to sit still and concentrate on their feet. And then concentrate on the hands. And it was all about being in that moment. Not letting that stress take over you. In reality, that is not true. If I was in that room, I'd be thinking, this is stupid. I'm not, why am I doing this? Why am I concentrating on my feet? But I wasn't. I said, I'm not doing that. I don't believe in it. And where was I? I was in my little room reading Leviticus for Sunday. I was chuffed. <laughs> But that is false hope. Hope has got to be something we have in the good time and in the bad time. Something that is in the quiet and the loud moments. Hope can be something that we can't just say, oh, I hope this will happen. I can't just say to Lynn, who's my maths teacher, I hope I'll pass maths. I hope it'll be all right. Or I can't say, I hope my room will be clean and then expect it to be clean. That isn't what hope is. I'd be smiling if that was hope. <laughs> but it can't, and it's not the case. Hope is like faith. We need to put it into action. Some of our hopes are out of our hands physically. But we can keep seeking and serving the Lord and not just wait to see it happen. Do something about it. Romans 8 verse 24 says, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is not seen, but hope that is seen is not hope. For anyone who sees why does he hope for it? Hope is something we physically can't see. I don't hope I get to see the birds in the sky. I can see that when I go outside. So I need something I can't see. Hope is something we cannot see. But we can see the effect of hope. We hope in something that isn't in front of us. We hope that we, that person we're praying for to be saved will come to know the Lord. And we won't let that go. When you think of the Lord and when you think of that day you get to see him face to face, so many emotions run through your mind. We've talked about it in Hub. And you can't describe it, but you can picture it. We have that hope that that will happen. When we take communion, when we read something in the Bible, when we hear a song that reminds us of that love, that hope, we can smile, we can let our heart burst because that's our relationship with the Lord and we can have the same hope that I had when I was getting a puppy but even more because it's in the Lord. But the one verse that my head wants to scan over and not read is after verse 24, it says in verse 25, but if we hope for what we do not see, then we'll wait with it with patience. 
Patience is not a strong suit of humanity, I've realised. We can always say it, and it's a virtue, apparently, but we have to wait with patience. This is the kind of patience that's made me think when Jesus was with his disciples, and he was doing miracles, he was doing amazing things, and then they turn around to him and say, when can we see God? Where are our rewards in heaven? The youth and me would always go, oh my days, with a safe face palm moment. Because we'd think, come on, dude. But he's right there in front of you. Even when the Lord says in John 10, verse 30, I and the Father are one. Jesus had faith in these men and hope that these, these exact men that was asking Jesus, can I see God, were the ones that would risk their lives for the gospel and to share, share it upon all nations. Jesus has that exact hope in us. He knows and has that trust in us. And yet, we sing the song, even though we fail you, I know you still love me. That's how amazing, how amazing the Lord is. I've never thought about the Lord having faith and hope in us. I've thought about having faith and hope in him, but not the other way around. But it's like the illustration, the one I just shared. We have hope in his word. And we believe in him. Our Father in heaven loves us and sees us as his children. And our Father believes in his child. He has that hope in you. I hope you realise he has that hope. We sang it today. He has that hope in us. He has that amazing love because he loves his children. And he won't leave his children. Hope is there. Don't let go of hope. The hope of the Lord will be the reason you make a decision. And by faith, you'll know it's for the Lord. And even though we sometimes can't see why we even made that decision, it was for the Lord. And the Lord wanted that. And that hope in your heart that it was for a purpose, even though we don't get to see it, is still enough. We need to share this hope with the world. We need to tell the world there is hope in Jesus. People are looking for hope. Let's point them to that real hope. That will save their life. However, they may not listen to this hope. And that is our fear sometimes, that they won't listen to this hope. But we need to tell them anyway, because it's their choice whether they can hold on to it. I was helping a spider out the bath. I was quite brave. I was helping a spider out the bath, and I'd give it a little thing to grab onto. I let it out, and then try to climb back into the bath. I thought, I've just saved you. Why are you jumping back in? But that's the same with when we share the Lord. They have a choice to either get back or they have a choice to go. It's a silly illustration, but as I said, I thought, this is us when we get shared. Well, this is the world. When we tell them about the Lord, they have a choice to think, I'm going to take this information and go. I'm going to take this hand and go. But the spider just jumped back in. And that's how frustrating it can be. People in the Bible were told there was a hope and that they will be a saviour. But they didn't get to see Jesus. But they had, a fo- a f- uh, they had hope and faith that it would come true. Even though that Jesus wasn't going to come down as a baby for a very long time, they had that hope. That is true hope. That is true hope when you're told about a saviour, but it's going to be so many years above you. To believe in that, To believe in that hope you cannot see is quite incredible. The Lord is with you. He really is. Sometimes that can be the one thing you think, yes, I know he's with me. I know he's with me. But sometimes it needs reminding. My school always misuse it and it upsets me. But we don't misuse it. The Lord is with you. Make him that joy. Make him that hope. That is the God we serve. That is living hope. Let it flow from your mouth. Let it flow from your heart. Because we've shared from the video what our hopes are. Don't forget it. Don't forget that he's with us. That is living hope. Don't let go of it. Amen.